Hi, everybody. Welcome to an introduction for searching for government information online. Uh, I am Orvi Dingwall. I'm Christine Nielsen. And we are your hosts for the next little bit. Um, okay, so we're going to get started. What we're going to cover today, we're going to make sure you know about MyNet services and everything that you have available to you. We're going to talk about the different kinds of government information that's available and we're going to discuss strategies for helping you find them so that you'll go away with sort of three concrete ways to approach when you're looking for government information. Now, first, we just want to make sure everybody is settled and sorted and familiar with our webinar. So if you need to ask a question or get our attention, um, you can use the questions box. So at the bottom of your screen, you should see, I call it a flower, what do you call it? Oh, it looks like Jax. Oh, Jax, yeah. Um, like from the kids, the kids games. Um, you click on that and it will bring up uh, your GoToWebinar box. If it doesn't bring up the box, you need to click on that uh, little, it's tiny orange arrow sideways. So if you need to ask a question, click on that blue flower jack and uh, open your chat box. Then you'll see here there's um, a, a line that says questions. You can click on that. That will open then the area where you can enter your question. And then you type it into the box and we will see it and respond to you. So we're also going to practice doing a poll. <laughs> I will test time right away. First thing, were you able to locate the questions box? So if you want to please respond. We'll give you a few more seconds. Most people have voted, almost everybody. Okay, so everyone who voted is able to, um, everyone who voted is able to, to locate. locate the question box. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, that is perfect. Wonderful. So we always, if you've been to our education sessions before, you know we always just provide a brief summary of MyNet to make sure everybody knows about it and knows about our services. We are the library service for Manitoba Health Seniors and Active Living, fee-for-service physicians all through Manitoba, and the participating regional health authorities, um, which are listed here. We have a small, wonderful, dynamic team of Christine and myself. Uh, Gail Matheson is another one of our librarians. And Cheryl is our MyNet library assistant. So um, if you don't already have a library card, please register because it helps with our statistics, but it also helps for in those instances when you need something, then you don't have to take that extra step of uh, filling out your form. Um, you've already got your card. So you just need to fill out the form, send it in to us, and uh, then poof, magic. We have four core services in MyNet, and they are literature searches, so anytime you have a question and you need a bunch of information on it, we'll send that to you. If you ever need the full text of an article or a document and you found it on Google or someone told, told you about it or you used to access it when you had access through the university, um, don't ever pay for it. Don't ever do without. Just send us a message and say, hey, I need this article. We'll send it to you. Um, we can also set up a current awareness alert. So if you have a favorite author or journal or topic or whatever it is, and you want to always get a weekly update on new things in that area, we'll set that up for you. And we also do these training, education, and orientation sessions. So we do our webinars um, on a pretty monthly basis. And we can also come to your unit if there's specific things that you're looking for. If you want to provide orientation to your team, we can do webinars, we can come in person, we're happy. And of course, there's the provincial license to up to date for um, almost every single health uh, professional in the province. And uh, here at MyNet, then we are the central hub of coordinators to get you into access that. So talking about government information specifically, we want to know, and we're about to launch the second poll, have you looked for government information online? So we will launch this, cast your ballots. There 
quick to respond this time. They are. Well, now they, they know where it is. They know where it is, yeah. Okay, so um, almost everybody has said yes. Some people said no. That's okay. It just helps to give us a little bit of a context to know. So if, if we know, if you know the world <laughs> that is online government information. Um, so thinking back for everybody who has uh, looked for government information online, thinking back to that experience, were you able to find what you were looking for? Tell us now. <laughs> okay. So unsurprisingly, over half of respondents say not really or, or no. And some people, yes. So pretty split, okay? Mm -hmm. About half said yes. Oh, no. Oh, it keeps, this is it's fascinating. I should wait until the poll has closed before <laughs> we summarize the results. Because, um, yes, so about half of you said not really, which is not surprising. Mm -hmm. Hence why we're having a session on it. Um, some people said yes, and one person said flat out no. It's right. impossible. Yes. So um, just to kind of acknowledge that experience, it's not, it's not you. It is hard. Um, there are a lot of reasons why it can be challenging to find government information. Um, some of that has to do with structure. So like different governments, like different provinces, they kind of organize their departments differently. That changes over time, you know, responsibility shift. Um, sometimes the information that you need is out there, but it's part of something bigger. So like some uh, larger report, uh, as an example, and you kind of have to have an idea of where it would be in order to find it. Uh, which you might or might not have to start with. Um, also, some stuff is just, it's just for internal use, right? They don't post these things. So like briefing notes and stuff like that, which, you know, are useful documents, but they're not publicly available. Sadly. Sadly. Um, and I mean, last but not least, <laughs> electronic stuff is wonderful, but it is ephemeral, right? You have a published paper document. It sits on a shelf. It is there. I mean, floods and fires and everything inside. Um, oh. But stuff that's online is not always um, online forever, right? And it um, goes missing so easily. Yeah. It moves, as you said, it gets moved around and... Mm -hmm. And I mean, like there is a certain, I, I, I don't want to get all conspiracy theory, um, but you might remember, uh, oh, or be rolling her eyes. <laughs> always. Um, or be, uh, sorry, la Last year, I guess, when Alberta had their election, yeah. there I don't know if you saw this story in the news, the, the librarians in Alberta were freaking out. They're trying to, to archive the climate change documents because they were afraid they would go away. Um, and I mean... And every time I think that there's been a big shift to any major conservative parties, like anywhere in the world, then that has happened. Because when Trump was coming in as well to America, there were librarians and archivists that were just um, archiving everything. Yes. And I mean... That, that aside, also just from a practical standpoint, for digital things, you need a digital infrastructure, and there's only so much space on the server. Um, so things are going to come down. You know, they, they have to make choices mm -hmm. in terms of what they yep. what they make available. Oh, sorry. Thank you. Um, so in terms of the types of government information, um, there's there's actually a kind of a, a broad spectrum, right? So statutes and regulations, those things um, are kind of top in mind for a lot of people uh, when it comes to, to government information. Um, and there are there are really two major sources to get at um, the statutes and regulations. Um, the Hansard, some of you will know about the Hansard, that records the debates that are held in the, the House of Commons and the, the provincial legislatures. Um, there's also the Gazette, uh, again, nationally and uh, provincially, the Gazette has um, three parts. Part one is public notices, official appointments, and proposed regulations. Part two um, has all the regulations that have been enacted, orders in council, orders in proclamation. Uh, part three has public acts of parliament that have received royal assent, right? So proclamations and orders in council relating to the acts. And um, I went through that really fast, but there is a handout that we're going to be sending to participants afterwards. So don't worry, don't worry if you didn't catch all that. And um, we not only send the um, handout, but also a copy of the slides. Mm -hmm. And we are recording today's session, so it also is available um, if that's the best way for you to remember these things. Oh yes, for sure. Um, 
And one thing to point out also, the Canada Gazette, they, they have a consolidated index, right? So you don't have to look through all the millions of, of, of um, issues. Um, so they have a consolidated index. It you know brings together a directory of all, all the regulations, um, statutory instruments, and other, other things uh, published in part two since 1955 um, for the Canada Gazette. The, the provinces uh, would have a, a similar kind of thing going on. Um, likewise, other Commonwealth countries would have a Hansard and Gazette as well. So like Australia, New Zealand, um, in England, of course, of course. <laughs> Let's hope so. Yeah, well, yeah. You know. um, so that's, that's kind of your starting point when you want to look for um, statutes and regulations. Okay. Uh, here in Manitoba, there is a website, a lovely website, Manitoba Law's website. Um, that kind of brings all the, the, the acts and regulations together, and that is that is uh, available online. Um, it is considered official, um, but just to point out that um, some jurisdictions, they have an electronic version, but they don't consider that to be the official version. So it would have to be the paper printed copy. Um, so if there were discrepancies or, I mean, I would hope there wouldn't be, but um, if there's ever any question, they go to the paper version. I have a question. Yes. So then if somebody is making a, let's say, a policy decision mm -hmm. um, or some other kind of very important like official decision based on some information, do you then recommend they access the print to be certain that that is the most, like if they've been using the electronic version, um, if that decision is based on the information from within it? Right. Or do you think um, only if you're having a discrepancy or like when would you go to the print? That is a good question. I guess... If it's readily available, then then it can't hurt. Um, if if uh, like I said, the, in, in Manitoba, unless it says otherwise, the the, the online is is as official the as the official print. version. Okay. Um, so that might not be so much an issue for folks here. Okay. Um, but if you're if you're looking at things, say in like British Columbia or Newfoundland or whatever, right. um, It's just it's something to keep in mind. Okay. Um, so if if you want to, you know cross all the T's and dot all the I's, then going to the print would be good. Okay. Um, but I guess it just depends on your, your situation. Fair. And I would love to hear um, if you have, if anybody has ever um, has a little story or an instance where they did have a discrepancy or have a need to go to the print, um, even if you just say like, yes, I have to use the print. Um, we'd love to hear about that in your in your questions box, just to, to kind of share with us, to get a sense of the kinds of things that you need in your work or your fun hobbies um, <laughs> yes. to make those decisions. Maybe we can open the, the question, sure. Just just in case somebody. Yeah, just in wants. case, good. Um, so yes, but in the meantime, we'll kind of keep things rolling because we, we do have a, a limited time. Oh, so far. Oh, is that we just can't read that? Oh, no need to access print so far. Okay, good to know. Um, yeah, so. There you go. I guess it depends on, on your situation. Oops, thank you, Marie. Um, like there's also bylaws, so just a different level of government. Um, and I've got an example here. This is from the city of Brandon, their ambulance bylaw. Um, bylaws are, are sometimes or most often accessible through the municipal website. So like if you were interested in something in Brandon, you would go to the Brandon city website and, and look for stuff there. Um, and, and so on and so forth. Uh, as, as far as I know, there's no like one stop for like all the municipal bylaws. Oh, neat. In, That's a good little that, project for somebody to create. Someone who's feeling ambitious. Um, so so there's there's kind of yeah. a, a different way to go for, for that level of government. Right. Okay. Um, we've also got government reports. They're often really useful sources of information. Um, and they'll deal with specific activities or topics. So like I've got a little screenshot here about the Alberta opioid response surveillance report. And that's, that's an older one that's from March. Um, but you know, then the uh, annual reports from indip indip pardon me, individual departments can also be useful as well. Um, so if, if you have a specific topic that you're interested in, that is the purview of a specific department, sometimes you can get information from their annual report. Uh, relating to that as well. Um, we've got what I'm, I'm, I'm calling it governance policy. So th this is this is 
less a step-by-step -step thing, list of things you have to do, um, but more kind of an overarching um, document, right? So for example, this one here is the uh, healthy aging uh, policy framework uh, from Newfoundland. Um, so like you get his background information about, you know, the folks living in Newfoundland, the, the demographics and all that stuff, but then it'll also have their goals, right? So, um, you know, goal number one is by such and such a year have whatever in place, well, that kind of thing. So less about how that gets done as just that it needs to be done, if that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Um, there's also procedural policy. Um, I'm calling procedural policy, that, which is the opposite, right? It's it's less kind of here's the overall stuff, as in these are all the things that you need to do. So uh, this is from the Ministry of Health in BC. You know, Chapter Four Home Health Services. Uh, you know, access to services. Th these are all the requirements, right? Um, so a lot more prescriptive than just a broad um, discussion. Okay, and. Um, yeah, so these these can be useful depending on on what kind of use information you're looking for, um, but again, it's it's kind of a different a different document. Um, we've got statistics and data, um, and I've I've got here Manitoba Health Characteristics. Sorry, Manitoba. <laughs> uh, Freudian slip. Mental health characteristics and suicidal thoughts. A screen capture from uh, Statistics Canada. Uh, and they are one source of data, right? So you can go to their website and browse um, either through topics, do keyword searches, that kind of thing. Um, and in this example, I don't know if you should be able to read it, um, I've chosen geography as Manitoba, uh, right? So you can see the number of people in Manitoba who consulted a health professional about emotional or mental health um, during this time period, right? Now, other jurisdictions will also put out statistical information as well. So, like, provinces will have um, their statistics, and sometimes you can find that by going to their individual websites. Um, but as I mentioned, sometimes it's in a report. Um, and my my kind of go-to example um, is death by suicide. Right. So in Manitoba, the Office of the Chief Medical Examiner is responsible for investigating all of those. Um, those deaths that might be suicide and other deaths as well. And so they would have in, in their documentation um, kind of a breakdown of, of, of the cases. And, you know, you know this number were, were attributed to suicide, et cetera, right? So if you're looking for that kind of information, um, that's another way to, uh, to go about that there. So um, like I said, thinking about where that is likely to be known and then kind of going on the hunt that way. A lot of legwork. Um, but there you have it. We're he spoiler. <laughs> we're, we're here to help. Yes. Um, the last, the last kind of government information that we're talking about is kind of like the the, the none of the above category, right? So information for particular groups. Um, so this example here is from the province of Saskatchewan, and um, it's about their 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 publication is infection prevention and control precautions for patients suspected or known to be infected with measles. Right, so kind of like a little bit of a, a flow chart, right? Like what, what you got to do and when. Um, but other 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 groups, for example, there might be um, guidance or explanation of of um, things for citizens, right? So like tenants' rights. Um, if you're a renter, you know these are these are the rights that you have and and, and so forth. Um, and so th those kind of span a real a real wide. Spectrum, mm -hmm. right, in terms of in terms of the none of the above. Okay. So, so how? What are the strategies mm -hmm. to find these things? So they all exist, but how are you actually going to find them? We're here to help with three key strategies. Strategy number one is when you're thinking about what you need, start to think about what government or department or agency is most likely to produce or collect or talk about the kind of information you need. Um, so very, I mean, sometimes, well, we never hear about the instances where I wanted to know about this and I did a little Google search and then I found this beautiful report that had everything I needed, <laughs> the end. We never hear about that because you can do that yourself very easily and we only hear about 
I need to have opioid information from, you know, the city of Winnipeg and the city of Brandon, and then for the whole province and for the whole country and for the Western regions and for these other like, so yes. So then you would need to go to all these different sources and then consolidate that. So start by thinking, what do you need? And who's likely to have that? So we've got an example here. Are we gonna go to those? I think so. Okay, so I will manage that while you- I will just you can, talk Yeah. About. Okay, so, so like Orby said, sometimes you, you, you can get what you need in one nice package, which is awesome. Um, and then you print it and put it on your shelf <laughs> and look at it fondly until the end of time. That's right. Um, but there's more than one source. So in our example here, we've got the uh, opioid related harms and deaths in Canada, um, information from Health Canada, right? And so they're, they've got a report, uh, apparent opioid related deaths, uh, suspected opioid related overdoses is, is another report. And so these um, kind of bring certain information together. And if that's what you need, then that's awesome. Um, alternatively, if I get you to switch to the mm -hmm. other one. So if you were to, and I'll get you to scroll. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, so obviously, all the provinces are collecting information about um, opioid epidemic type issues. Um, and so here at the Government of Alberta site, you've got all their various quarterly reports. Um, most recent is from, apparently from March. Yeah. Um, and but if you can kind of keep going down, so they they have some additional. Um, they they slice their information and collect information. Um, in a slightly different way as well, right? So they've got some interim reports, they've got some response reports, um, they've got some information about opioids and substance misuse specifically amongst First Nations people, um, particularly among youth. Um, they've got some un unintentional fentanyl related deaths. Um, there are a lot of ways to slice this. There are a lot of ways to slice it. So um, the Health Canada document is useful. Um, this might have a little bit extra information though that would be useful as well. So um, yeah, it, it really helps to, to to think about what it is that you want and all the things that you're interested in mm -hmm. and uh, and kind of go from there. All right. Okay, so strategy number two is if you're not sure where specifically to start or you're in kind of um, a larger topic area where, uh, so either maybe you've struck out or maybe you think like, gosh, I don't even know like which government department this might target, especially if it's something like about aging. Aging might be about, you know, it could be about different, um, it's not just a health thing. You know, you've got aging and seniors and- um, It could be like, like the, the social work aspect. Yeah, kind of thing as there's, well. you know, again, lots of different ways to look at it. So if you're not sure where to start, um, there's different, well, we've called them finding aids, um, and we've got um, a great one uh, here at the, uni well, we think it's great, here at the university, and you can um, view this, anybody can view it, it's open, I'll just make it a little bit bigger, and so what this is, is it's an overview of government publications, where to find them, and some of the major databases here, so you've got Government of Canada Publications, now this um, public documents one, it is, you won't have access to it, but we will. So anytime you hit into that kind of thing where um, you can't access it, but it's on a University of Manitoba site or even another university, sometimes mm -hmm. you can search any any universities. Um, they've, they might have some good government publications. And this can be particularly helpful well, for one here in Canada, but even if you thought, uh, hey, I know that Australia has a really great initiative on whatever it is you're interested in. You could go to one of their universities and learn about where they collect that information. Like it's a really, they're really great starting tools. Mm -hmm. For sure. Do you have um, anything else to say about them or? Um, well, I guess there is a little bit of a caveat. I mean, like mm -hmm. some of these resources will be um, just generally open to the public. Some of them will be subscription based. But also, um, in our particular situation, the, the, the government documents librarian has retired. Oh, right. Um, and so Sadly. It, it is very sad. <laughs> he was so good. <laughs> we, we would go, to, when we would get stuck on things, we would go to him 
and it was like he was a wizard. It was magic. Magic. He would find um, find all the things. That's right. Um, so until until that they have a new person in place in that kind of role, um, there. I don't think anyone's actually maintaining this, right? So, um, right. so I know I've, I've come across a couple of times where I've clicked on something and like the link is dead. Um, but that being said, I mean, it's still a really it's, great it's, starting, it's point. A good starting point. Yeah, and even if you, um, uh, like Christine had touched on uh, some of the different, like the Hansard, if you've gone and forgotten what the heck that's called, mm -hmm. using these tools um, is a helpful way to then um, sort of get your brain in that headspace to think about, gosh, where do I go searching for these kinds of things? Mm -hmm. So still a good starting point. Oh, for sure. Yes, but yes, some broken links, a couple of things outdated. We we assume they will be fixed eventually. So I'm far. confident because we all use it so much. So mm -hmm. did you want to talk about? Oh, uh, sure. So um, now there are also uh, some some jurisdictions have kind of centralized databases or catalogs. Um, and, and we're talking about like the, the non-legislation type documents. So like your policy and, and, and all that kind of thing. Um, and so we've got a list here of uh, the ones that, that we've been able to locate. Um, and it's, it's, I mean, it's not all of them, but uh, in cases, so like for example, BC is missing. So if you wanted to look at um, what's going on in a particular uh, topic area in BC, well then you could go to the, the government of BC website and then kind of you know explore and search there um it's it's just not a centralized database which is surprising because so much their health site is it's really top good top notch yeah yes but i mean it is what it is it is what it is <laughs> yeah oh. <laughs> they can't have everything perfect that's right otherwise that would just be unfair um <laughs> and so just to let you know sometimes what we do um and that's if we if you if somebody had a question about i need to know about how different provinces are collecting their opioid information, for example. Mm -hmm. So we then would go province by province looking for that information. And so having these centralized databases is really helpful. We would, you still unfortunately have to go to each one separately. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For sure. Um, kind of along the same vein, we've got data portals as well. So these are not so much documents as actual like data. Um, so a bunch of provinces have kind of an open data initiative and you can access their data um, through that. And uh, yeah, that's, that's handy if, if what you need is data. Yeah. Okay. Um, we threw St Stats Canada in there as well, um, just because it is, it is data. Some of it comes in the form of data tables, some of it comes in the form of results. Um, so it's not really like, as a, as a repository, but it is also a good good source. Yeah, data. it's a primary source for great Canadian data. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, did you want to say anything about like the, the Kaihais and stuff? Or oh, um, yes, I thought I had a note about that later, but I'll talk about that here. And there's also like we we advertise this session as government data, mm -hmm. um, which hence that is our focus. Uh, but there are also really great sites um, to get other kinds of data as well mm -hmm. in Canada. And so we did, do we, where uh, did we include them? Uh, not in the slides. Oh, not in the slides. Okay. But there is also um, the CIHI that they have great, they take more like, diff, they have different data points. Mm -hmm. And the same for like Manitoba Center for Health Policy, they've got great data and great reports. Ontario has similar initiatives, Alberta does, they're called like ICE or ISIS or Something. They, something. Um, again, when we need to remember each and every one of those, we've got lists of them available too, um, because sometimes you have to search them individually. And, and it's just one of those things, like sometimes um, the province that you're looking for or the city or the region or the country or whatever will have all of that data consolidated in a beautiful report. Uh, and that does happen. Oh, yeah. And other times uh, they don't. And then you have to go province by province and source to source. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, Kai High, Manitoba Center for Health Policy, they're not official government places, but they do have primary authoritative data. Yeah. So, the third strategy, which was probably your first strategy, <laughs> um, which is Google. And I mean, you can. Um, you can just 
type in, you know, Opioid Statistics Canada, that'll get you some good results. Um, you can also use some of the advanced Googling um, techniques that we've got. So the first one is um, always my favorite to make sure people know and make sure they're using, and that's quotation marks. So if you know that there is a report on something or you're searching for a certain phrase like social determinants of health, put that in quotation marks so only that phrase is searched. Uh, and also think about synonyms for the terms that you're searching. So uh, you might be thinking about myocardial infarction, but you also want to think about the layperson term of heart attack. So you want to do your searches using both of those synonyms. Um, and Google also defaults to and. So if you searched um, assisted suicide and medically assisted dying, if you, if you didn't put or or and between them, it would assume that you wanted assisted suicide and medically assisted dying. But if you wanted one or the other, you could either do separate searches, so just one on assisted suicide and then one on medically assisted dying, or you can put the word or in. Mm -hmm. uh, and you can also use um, the uh, asterisk sign. So, uh, and that helps um, sort of expand a word or a phrase. So often we talk about primary care, it can also be called primary health care. You can spell health care as two words, you can spell it as one word, primary medical care, primary community care, all those kinds of things. So sometimes you might want to um, use that asterisk to explode or expand upon that, that concept. Yeah. And, and you would use that when you use your quotation marks, right? Right. So it would just look for what's in between primary and care, that whatever's in between doesn't matter. Right. It doesn't, yeah. But it's still different than looking for the word primary and the word care. Right. Um, and then our final example here is really helpful if a website um, it does not have a very sophisticated search function. So I'm sure we've all been to a website and and some sites are getting better. I know, you know, that over some sites are still not as good. Um, but sometimes you'll be on a site and you'll say, I know that I was here yesterday, I found this beautiful report on this site, and I want to access it again, and I forget what it's called, but I remember some words from it, and you put it in the search box, and it gives you zero results or a billion results, and it's really hard. You can use Google instead. And one way to do that is to say, like, okay, I know it was on a Government of Canada site, so I'm going to say site gc.ca and in my quote, social determinants of health, and that will then take me to, to, um, to that site. Uh, for, so we haven't done live examples, we've just kind of talked through them, but if you wanna know more uh, great tips and tricks like this, um, we haven't, this is like the first announcement uh, that are backed by popular demand, Googling for good evidence session. We're gonna have it again on November 22nd. It'll be a webinar. Uh, we'll be sending out that information, but we just spend lots of time, you know, really going through these examples and working through these tips. Um, just, I mean, because often you can find what you're looking for just by putting, you know, things into the Google search box, but other times um, it's really good to use these tools to be more systematic or be more thorough or sort of dive deeper when um, you're more uh, introductory level Google searching. I uh, did not find you what you needed. So Google, coming up November 22nd. Uh, finally, strategy number four is ask for help. And we say that both because that is our job. That's what we do. This is what we're here. Um, but some, oh my gosh, sometimes these questions are so hard. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> um, which is why we're here and why, and so, when you know spend we wanted to have this session so you could spend a bit of time just uh, you know so you could type in some stuff into Google find some reports you could level up on that skill but once you've kind of looked around and you've said okay I've got kind of patchwork um, I found this and this or you say all right this is what I've been able to find but I'm missing this element and this element and this element please help me find that that's where we're happy to take over um, so you can always send us a message. We would call that a literature search mm -hmm. and we would dive into all of the um, strategies that we have 
And like we mentioned a little bit earlier, not only do we have access to the internet the same as you do, but we also have access to the subscription resources that the university has. Um, and one of them is, is one of our favorite tools that we have such a hard time remembering its name. Basically what it does, it's a team and they find all of the different reports that are published by government groups, but also those sort of non-government groups, but that are publishing authoritative information. Um, and they have just one place to go to search. So that's really helpful, especially if something falls off a government website or um, is just kind of buried and hard to find. And then it just gives you one place so you don't have to search each province by province by province and territory. Uh, so we can definitely search that. There's also the legislative library um, and the staff there, they are they are wizards. That, that is their deal. <laughs> that is their deal. That is what they do. Um, now we are, and you are not their primary clientele, but um, they are really helpful and they still are happy to answer their questions. So first stop is to start with us, um, but second stop might be to go to them. Mm -hmm. um, and then the other thing is to contact individual departments for information. So sometimes there's stuff, as you know, it's on intranets and it's on intranets for different reasons, but there, you know, people are allowed to share it or they can point you in the direction or they can say, you know, we're working on this too, or we can tell you about this, but we can't share that yet. And all those kinds of things. Yeah. So going back to my, my story about the, um, the whole if you wanted to know the suicide stats, oh, right. it's the chief medical examiner's office. Right. Well, um, I had the name of the, the report that those stats would be in. I needed to find this information for someone. And do you think I could find it anywhere on the Manitoba government website or like the internet? No. no. I, I knew what it was called for crying out loud. Right. Um, and which is usually a very easy Google search. It's usually very, yeah. very straightforward. Um, but I happened to find in a different report, a different one of their different annual reports from uh, Justice, which is where the chief medical officer's office lives, um, that there's this little line in there saying, oh yeah, they collect this information. If you want it, you need to call them. <laughs> they don't actually make this. Because it's, it's 1985. It's available to the public, but it's not available to the public. Oh, you actually have to make a request for it. Um, so there might be some instances where, where that kind of thing goes on. Um, so yes, if you have contacts, like if, if you know someone in, in another department, if you're working at Manitoba Health, or if you know you find the contact number for, for a department, if you, if you don't know somebody, um, you can always call and ask them mm -hmm. if, you, if you know what it is that you need. Um, and even if you don't, you could even, because there's been times too, and I've made calls and said, do you collect this? Mm -hmm. kind of information and they said yes haven't you seen our beautiful report and i would say no because your website is a disaster uh and then they just emailed it to me so that was great um but yeah, yeah. i mean un unfortunately uh that's still how we are finding some information yes yeah and and also too it does help when you say you know i'm calling from this government department to another government department as you know within your networks mm -hmm. That, that does give you a, a leg up on things. So our summary on the strategies. Think about who would collect the information. Think about first, and we should have had, <laughs> think about what you are interested in yes. um, and, and what you're looking for. So that's primary step one. Uh, and then think about which government or department or agency is gonna have that information. And then you can use the finding aids like our, our library's guide to help you sort of identify other sources and uh, you know, go in deep with Google, come to our November session. If you can't wait, we've got a recording of our previous one um, uh, on our MyNet site. And fourth, you know, ask for help. And I mean, this is, a, they're not necessarily rank ordered. You don't have to go through each of these steps. You could just ask for help first. Um, you know, these are just some strategies that you can, that you can, uh, utilize. Mm -hmm. Anything else, Christine? Well, um, nothing immediately springs to mind. Did you want to maybe take a pause for questions? Definitely. Open up the yeah, box so you box? can open up your uh, questions box and send us a little message if there was something that you were hoping to hear about or hoping to learn about. If you wanted to see a little example of um, how we do some wizardry. <laughs>
No leftovers, please. <laughs> And, um, and I'll, we'll just reiterate again, we will be sending the handout, which has some of the information that we talked about, mm -hmm. and we'll send a copy of the slides. And very soon, if you enjoyed today, um, we've got three, our fall session we're about to announce. We've got sessions in September, October, and November with lots of great new um, series just to help you sort of find and navigate information. Mm -hmm. Everybody's so quiet. They're all politely saying, what am I going to eat for lunch? <laughs> That's right. It's 11.42. Let's wrap this up. <laughs> I'm hungry. Okay, well, um, that was everything that we prepared for today. Uh, we will be on the line if, if anybody has any questions or comments. Um, yeah, and you can always reach us by our email addresses, uh, and you can visit our website. And we thank you very much for coming. Oh, thank you. So like we said, we'll stay on for a few moments if you have any questions. Yes, we will be sending a copy of the um, presentation to you and also a record. We post the recording on our website as well. So I'll just pull that up. And so on our MyNet website, www.mynet.ca, on the left hand side here um, is all of our MyNet education recordings. So all of the different ones that we have. So if you're interested in viewing today's or one of our past ones that you may have missed, they're, they're here as well. But we'll also be following up with email. Okay, so most people have left. Um, you can, any other questions, you can send us an email, stop in at Christine's office at Manitoba Health or, um, uh, or, or give us a call. I was going to say, yeah. <laughs> Thanks so much for joining us. Bye.